All right, so let's get this whole process started by creating a terrain layout tool inside of Houdini, which we will then pull over into Unity using the Houdini engine. So that way we can actually paint our terrain layout with some basic shapes. All right, so it's gonna be pretty cool. All right, so let's uh, start off by jumping over into Houdini and creating the HDA. Okay, so uh, first things first, let's just move these guys off to the side because this was our gentle introduction to tops. And what I want to do is I want to start working on the terrain layout tool. Okay, so I'm actually going to make this an object level uh, HDA. And by that, I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a geometry node that handles the uh, layout or the painting. So there's going to be the painting node. And then we might end up having some other geometry nodes inside of this HDA that handles uh, things like scattering something or or doing something for us all right in terms of our terrain layout now I want to keep this relatively simple uh, so we're not going to get completely into all this but I, I just want to go over you know how to make this into an object level HDA and that way we can have multiple systems inside of our HDA so I'm just going to select these two guys and hit shift C on the keyboard and that puts it into a subnet right there okay so now this subnet basically is our entire layout system if you will. All right, so this one HDA can now take care of multiple things instead of just being a, a single geometry node um, that, you know, performs, you know, a single action kind of thing or a single task. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this uh, the IP uh, terrain layout. Yeah, that'll work for now. All right, and then I'm just going to right click on this, say create digital asset, right, just so we get ourselves all set up so we can start promoting properties or parameters to our HDA to the UI all right it's always a good idea to kind of get things rolling this way when you first start out because now what happens is we get the type properties window for our HDA so we can go and while we're building our HDA we can go and promote parameters up here to our UI that way we can start to flesh out the the components that we, we will need inside of our HDA all right Cool. So let's jump in and let's get a few things set up here. So I'm going to go into the painting uh, geometry node there. I'm going to drop down a grid. And this grid basically is going to allow us to paint inside of Unity. We'll be able to paint where we want our mountains to go. And we'll also be able to paint the, the size of our mountains. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to have this particular grid the same size as our actual terrain. Right. It makes sense. We need to make sure that this, you know, is the same size of our terrain so we get a better idea of what we're doing in terms of laying out the mountains all right and so to do that uh, what i want to do is i want to set this to something like 1025 by 1025 all right and instead of setting both those at the same time what i'm going to do is just right click on this guy on the size x here and say copy parameter and paste that over there this now gives us control over the the whole size all right so both dimensions are being updated all right, and so I'm going to leave the default at 1025 by 1025, and that's our first parameter we really want to promote. All right, so this is why we make that HDA first. So I'm just going to go back up to the object level here, right click on my HDA and say type properties, and that'll bring up the type properties window. And this allows me to promote my UI elements. So now we have the train size. So I'm just going to change the label on that. And what I want to do is I want to make this so that we can't go any lower than 513 and we can't go any higher than 5 or 4897. All right, so I'm just going to clamp these guys out. Cool. And the default is set to 1025. Cool. So I'm going to hit apply and accept. That'll be our first step in getting our terrain layout going. The next thing I, w I really want to do is uh, promote the rows and columns. So I'm just going to do the same thing here for the rows and columns. I'm going to make sure that we just have one property so we just keep everything square okay so let's jump up again and create our ui parameter for that so i'm going to go back into here and just a uh, alt middle mouse click on the rows to uh, propagate that up to our type properties window and i'm just going to call this the resolution like so and these values are fine for now all right so Cool. What I want to do now, I'm actually just going to leave the type properties up for right now. So what I want to do now is I actually want to create a couple of uh, attributes for this particular grid. All right. So what I want to do is I want to drop down an attribute create node here. All right. And what I'm going to do is create a couple of attributes in here. So one attribute is going to be our density. All right. 
And our second attribute is going to be our scale. Cool, and I'm, we're going to basically default them to uh, 0 and 0. All right, so now we have two attributes, and you can verify that on each point. If you go to the geometry spreadsheet, we have density and scale now. And I want to make both of those paintable. Okay, so to do that here, let's actually name this. So we're just going to say uh, terrain adders, or we can call them painting adders. But what we want to do is we want to drop down an edit node. All right, and this edit node will allow us to actually paint those properties inside of, or those attributes inside of the Houdini engine. All right, because we can actually make this our painter right here. And if we just take that node and we say, or we tell the HDA that we want to make that particular node editable, all right, that will actually allow the Houdini engine to pick that up and it'll show us the painter inside of the Houdini engine. All right. And what it'll do is it'll allow us to paint these particular point attributes so we can paint value into it. And then we could use those values to uh, basically scale up and down our mountains. All right. So let's get that hooked up. Uh, what I want to do is create a tube here because I want all my mountains to basically be, you know, these cones. All right. And what I want to do is I'm going to just display this so we can see it. And we're going to make it a polygon. And I'm going to set the first radius to zero so we get a nice cone shape here. All right. And then I basically want to take the height. So I'm going to copy the height parameter, put that into the center here. So paste relative reference. I'm going to multiply that by 0.5. That way we get this particular cone sitting right on the grid. Okay. So now what we can do is we can actually go and scatter some points onto our grid. So let's scatter some points here. All right. So I now have my grid, but we have, we've gone and we've scattered a bunch of points onto it. And what we can do is we can say by density. So it's by default set to by density, but we can utilize the density attribute. All right. And now that basically means that uh, it's going to pick up whatever density value we put in there, and it'll try to scatter values or scatter points more towards the wider areas of de density. Okay, so with that, we now have our points. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to basically copy those points. So I'm going to do a copy to points. All right, like so. So I'm just going to take my mountain there and copy it to points. So now we've got a bunch of these little tiny cones. So what we need to do is we actually need to scale that up uh, for our resolution. Well, we should probably just promote this, but we should have some good defaults for this as well. So the radius scale, I think I'm going to pump that up to like 50. That looks pretty good. My height, let's set that to something like, uh, let's just do 50 and 50 and see what that looks like. Nah. Let's actually reduce the amount of scatter. So the default scatter, we don't need a thousand of those. And let's make our radius scale 100. And there we go. So that's probably a good default. Let's set this to 70 maybe. There we go. That's going to be our rough terrain layout that we can actually paint inside of Unity. Okay. So with that, let's actually get those properties promoted as well. We should probably start making some folders too. So this folder is going to be named uh, terrain. And we'll just put both of these properties that are more for terrain stuff in the terrain folder and then we'll put in a mountains folder so I'm going to say mountains like so and let's actually promote our radius scale our default radius scale and our height to that mountains folder like so all right cool and that basically gets most of that stuff set up all right last thing I want to do is I also want to merge in the grid because we need a ground as well so let's just merge in the grid. And what I'm going to do for this, instead of actually just dragging this wire all the way down to here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an object merge node, like so. I'm going to say get grid. And in this object merge, we don't need to transform it. We're just going to go and get the grid. And I need to make sure that this is relative. All right, so we don't want a path to OBJ. There we go. And you can see we now have our grid, like so. And that is how we start to build a terrain layout tool. So I'm going to drop a null at the bottom of this and we'll just call this out la terrain layout. Like so. Very cool. Okay. So with that, let's see, is there anything else I really want to promote? Oh, the other thing that we really need to do, or at least we should get hooked, hooked up right now is our uh, scale value. So after we scatter all these points, let's drop down a wrangle node here and 
I really just want to hook up the P scale value. So that built in attribute that all points basically are looking for. So if we take our P scale value and just assign scale to it, like so inside of a wrangle node, uh, and then wire that into our copy to points over here, you can see that all of our mountains are now zero scale. They're literally just sitting there. It's, and that's because we haven't painted any value. And so what we can do is we can actually just create a really rough random scale, or we can just set a default. So let me show you both those ways really quickly here. Okay, so let's go back up to our terrain adders here. Now, if we wanted to create random attributes, all right, for this scale value by default, uh, we could come in here, we could do a rand function, all right, um, or we could also use the attribute randomize. So let's go up to attribute randomize, drop down that node like so. And all, the attribute that we actually want to randomize is our scale value, okay, and our uh, dimensions is going to be one, and that's because it's just a single value, all right? And you can see we're already getting random values in there from zero to one. Now we can go and make a, a minimum value. So if we set this to, let's just leave that at zero and set this to 10, you can see that we go now from zero to 10, basically. But I'm going to leave it at one for now. And then let's feed that into our painter. All right. And let's take a look at the results here. And our P scale didn't pick up the scale for some odd reason there. And what I want to do is come up to my attribute randomize or on points. Yep. Everything's looking good. And that's probably because I really just need to tell Vex, there we go, that this is a float just by putting an F in front of it. And there we go. So now we have a rough starting terrain. So now that I can see it, what I want to do is I actually want to go and for the minimum value, I don't want to ever get to zero. So let's put in 0 0.5 and two for the max or 1.5. Let's do 1.5. There we go. So that gives us something uh, a little bit more interesting to look at uh, right when we uh, dump this into the Houdini engine inside of Unity. All right, so there we go. We now have our terrain layout tool built out. So what I'm going to do as a final step here is just right click on the terrain layout node and say save node type. I'm going to apply and accept all of our changes here. And oh, one thing I really wanted to do before we close this out is I always like to make my folders collapsible for the, the Houdini engine inside of Unity specifically. All right, there we go. So I'm going to save it one more time. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to test this out inside of Unity. Thanks so much.